in, in this kind of context, the command to be watchful has to do with uh, keeping your eyes open to see what we are inclined not to see, being vigilant, um, looking past the surface of things to see things in the unseen world, the spirit world. It has to do with keeping our eyes open to notice what God is doing uh, and, and keeping our eyes open to notice what the enemy is doing. Be aware of the war zone in which we live, the spirit world in which we live. The normal worldling who doesn't have a regenerate heart or a regenerate mind, they just see the physical world. They live in, in their whole context is the physical world, the here and now, and, and it's physically defined. But kingdom people are to be having their eyes open to see more than that. Keep your eyes open to what God is up to and, and um, give thanks for that. And also keep your eyes open to what, is, what, what the enemy is doing. Be vigilant in this. And it's important. Now, the assumption behind this command is this. And you find this, it just permeates the entire New Testament. The assumption is that God is always active. You find that that assumption permeates the New Testament. Jesus says, my father's always working, and I work. Uh, he's always busy. God doesn't need to rest, take breaks, take naps, go on vacation or anything. He's always busy doing his stuff. Uh, Paul says it this way in Acts 17. It's a marvelous verse. He says that he's talking to these uh, Athenian philosophers, and he says that uh, from the beginning with Adam and Eve, God has been at work in the rise and fall of various nations to get people to search for him and possibly find him, though, Paul adds, in truth, he's not far from any of us. And what he's saying there is that throughout history, nations have rose and nations have fallen. They've had times and seasons. And those have been, you know, determined by kings who declare war in other kingdoms and, and all that fighting, you know, and all that. But, but God's been involved in all of that uh, in order to get people to search for him and possibly find him, though he's not far from any of us. It means that God is always and everywhere active with every person. God's active to, to bring about as much redemption as possible, as much goodness as possible, as much, as much uh, uh, blessing as possible, to further his kingdom. God's always been present to minimize evil as much as possible. And the possible is defined by the fact that God created a world where there are free agents, human and angelic, and God doesn't coerce them, otherwise they wouldn't have free will and couldn't make a responsible choice for or against him. Uh, and he wants a responsible choice for him. And so he works around that constraint. There will be evil things that are happening, but it's never because he's there. In fact, if he was not there, far worse things would happen. He's the one who's always minimizing evil and furthering the good. And what it means is that, if we think about it, there hasn't been a nanosecond of your life where God was not present there. There hasn't been a fraction of a second. From the very beginning, every moment of your life, God was there working for the good, working to bring blessing, working to minimize evil. Even in your darkest moment, when you felt most alone and most rejected, you were not alone, and you certainly were not rejected, not by him. Um, God was present there, and, and however bad the situation was, it would have been far, far worse if God was not there. However much evil there was there, there would have been much more if God was not there pushing back on it. 